Erica Johnson, uh, Floyd County semi-native, moved there when I was five, and co-founder of Across the Way Productions and Lloyd Fest with my partner, Amy Brown and Chris Hodges. How did you end up in Southwest Virginia, and particularly in Floyd? Uh, well, my parents were following a dream of their own, albeit a vague one. They're from Michigan, and they were part of the whole Back to the Land movement. Uh, the mountains of Virginia called to them. My dad had a job at Virginia Tech, so we moved here uh, to the Floyd Montgomery County area again when I was five. So, your background in music, can you talk about that? Conversation. I don't have one. <laughs> and yet you're running one of the most well-loved music festivals in the region. Well, what that speaks to is the fact that music these days is a business, and that's my end of it. My partner, Chris, is the artist, musician, and that's definitely the element he brings to it. We have a fairly clean, at this point, ten years into it, division of labor. And he is uh, kind of the creative end of it. He picks all the talent, um, and I am the day-to-day -day administrator. So when did that idea come to be? Was it while you were running Oddfellas? Uh, yeah, and coincidentally, we had a meeting at Oddfellas last night. Really? That, yeah. And then this is the restaurant that you ran for quite a while, um, though it's been quite a while. It was also a live music venue. Yes. Uh, actually, this is, this is interesting timing. Our meeting last night was to hand over our nonprofit farm, Blue Cow Arts, to a new board of directors. And both Blue Cow Arts and Cross the Way Productions and the idea for the festival, Whole Kit and Caboodle, was born at Oddfellas in the kitchen as we were kind of brainstorming our next creative effort. Um, when we had the opportunity to sell the restaurant a year into it. Um, so it was really just kind of serendipitous to be there again 11 years into it with Floyd Fest at a very different point. Um, but yes, Oddfellows, Oddfellows was definitely kind of the germination of the festival idea. Floyd was ripe for you know, someone to harness kind of the creative energy. Um, of the music there and the art and just the the unique community um, and at the time the good food and the locally grown food. So Oddfellas was something of a community venue and uh, that's where we kind of started our division of labor and Chris was bringing acts like Norman Blake and Rhonda Vincent, Stacey Earl, Patty Keenan into our, our little restaurant venue and uh, we were just having a good time doing it all, but the glamour wears very thin, very quickly in the restaurant industry. And, you know, once Oddfellas was off the ground and established, which happily it, it happened and it is still there, um, we were like, well, what next? And we'd always had the idea of a big music festival in Floyd, and 11, 12 years ago was when that whole movement was undergoing its initial resurgence, Bonnaroo, um, a multitude of others on the scene today, and things just fell into place in the way that they do in Floyd, and at Floyd Fest, really. Yes. And, you know, if you're pursuing your passion with determination, tenacity, and acceptance of the bumps in the road, um, and we found the perfect venue off the Blue Ridge Parkway, and the owner was amenable with minimal persuasion. Uh, and that's where my kind of background in English and persuasive writing comes into play. We had a business plan, you know, we weren't just mm -hmm. wide eyed. Um, and, uh, you know, 11 years later, it's been just an art project that has grown and grown. How did you find the site then off the Blue Ridge Parkway? When did you? How did you know that was the place to do it? Uh, or we took place? a long Sunday drive, and you know, the location, location, location. It's true whether you're at Starbucks or a music festival, and Floyd itself has become quite a destination vacation spot. Uh, of course, it's got the country store, the crooked road, all the things that draw people to Floyd in the first place, and it's just a beautiful place to come visit. But then the parkway as the longest linear park in the U.S., and it's just so beautiful and 
non-commercial and 10 minutes from town, what better setting for amazing music than on a stage with a background of trees and mountains and nature and, you know, no competing commercial elements. So one of our taglines is music, magic, mountains. And uh, it just really manifests there on the Blue Ridge Parkway. What about the culture of Floyd? And I sometimes think I see that reflected perhaps in the culture at Floyd Fest, that meeting of demographics, if you want to use a prosaic term. But um, how, how was that, how did that connect with what you wanted to do and how has it continued to be part of it? Well, there's a, you know, one of my favorite lines from Spider-Man is Peter Parker's grandfather says, with great power comes great responsibility. That translates for us into if you name a festival after your town, there's a great responsibility for that festival to be a responsible entity within the community and to showcase the community in a, in a positive way. And we do think that Floyd Fest is kind of a, a magnification of Floyd as a town and community in that, and another one of our taglines is Floyd Fest spanning genres and generations. Um, you know, we have multiple genres of music at the festival, and we've kind of found a niche as that sort of festival, where you can hear all types of different music, as well as being a family-friendly, generation-spanning festival. You know, it's one that my entire family from Michigan comes to, or my grandmother is, nobody knows how old, we think she's 90-something, um, but our the average age of our demographic is late 30s, families, uh, college education, and then some. So it's really a, it's a unique demographic as far as music festivals go, most of which just do skew younger. Uh, and we give reference to local artists and in terms of our, our vendors and our art scene there. Um, so you see a lot of the craftspeople of Floyd represented there. Uh, a lot of the healing arts, massage therapy, reiki, tai chi, all of that, which there's a lot of employed. And then, of course, we have uh, the workshop porch, which is a showcase um, for Virginia artists. And that's in conjunction with the Virginia Foundation for the Humanities. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So some great partnerships yes. that you all have built. Yes. In the and even the timber frame stages, where so much of the great music happens, are local Floyd timber framers. Streamline and Dream Creek. So just a lot of community elements represented there on that 80 acre plateau. Yeah. This year, what are you expecting? How many people are you expecting and who have you got lined up music wise? Well, our lineup, and of course we say this every year, it's true, and then we get to say it again the next year, but it's really off the hook this year with the Lumineers, for example, and Edward Sharp and Magnet Magnetic Zeros, just some. Some big acts. The Lumineers have had the number one song for a while. Wow. We're showcased on the Grammys. Um, we are expecting a full house again and an earlier sellout. Uh, you know, the last couple years we've sold out right before gates opened, the year before that, when the gates opened, and this year we're trying to be sold out by the time the festival rolls around. And we have put all of our energies this year, I would say, into the lineup. And then on the logistics side of things, into the transportation effort at Floyd Fest. A complete revamping of that. Really? We have been working on it since a week after the festival. No one, and I'm going on record now saying this, no one will wait longer than 20 minutes for a shuttle. We've consolidated all our off site parking, park and camping, basically everything into what we're calling the Alpha Delta Complex. Okay. Having a lot of fun with that. All our workers are going to have these playing on Greek letter kind of t-shirts. And uh, I am, my goal is to make the park and camp area so much fun that some people don't even use their <laughs> fest tickets. I kid you not. Music, vending, a whole scene in the parking area. So, oh, that's one. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. So that's so one, cool. been one of our biggest logistical challenges, of course, is that we can't fit the cars on site. Right. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. So. You all live 
not in Floyd County, or kind of the edge of Montgomery County, in my remembering, but Ed, I've visited once. You all are in yurts, yeah. right? And up in the mountains. It's a wonderful place. It's beautiful. But I'm sure it also has its challenges, too. Yeah. Um, I have a magnet on my refrigerator that says, everything in life is sweetened by risk. I would even say challenge. You know, I'm becoming a little more risk-averse as I, you know, face down the second half of my life. <laughs> but still up for a good challenge. Um, we do. We've always been kind of fringe dwellers, which I think is an interesting theme that runs through our life. Of course, Boy Fest being half in Lloyd County, half in the lovely county of Patrick, Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, literally, our yurts, we have one foot in Montgomery County and one foot in Floyd County. You know, uh, it's just interesting. But my mom has been something of my a role model for me in my life, and she's always been a real entrepreneurial type of person, worked for herself, given me the opportunity to work for her when I was underemployed. Um, but she started your company. We were some of her earliest clients, and Chris and I have a his and hers yurt in the mountains, um, right where the paved road ends and the gravel road begins, and it's basically 35 minutes from anywhere. Rowan of Floyd or Montgomery mm -hmm. County, and we like it that way. And, uh, you know, you grow up living in nature and with privacy, and it's just really hard to live any other way. I love town and its amenities, but that's where my heart is in the woods. Yeah. And you have two children. We do. We have a 15 year old and our 10 year old Chloe. That's part of the story I was telling last night when everything kind of coalesced around Boy Fest. We also found out we were pregnant. Oh so my goodness. Chloe <laughs> was three months old during the first Boy Fest, which will always be a blur for me. Yeah. Literally, because it was very, very foggy all weekend. And I couldn't really see that day. Is this my baby? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Where did this come from? Where are we? Yeah. How fun. What a great memory. <laughs> Better in hindsight, than yeah. <laughs> uh, they yeah. are very, very adaptable, yes. good, humorous children. Thank goodness, it's carried <laughs> them this far, and will continue to do so. Yeah, and probably you as well. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any other plans? I know you all have done some spinoff events in the past. Um, are there any other plans for that with the festival right now, um, or are, for this year or future? You know what I would say to that is we are um, blessed to be a part of the Virginia wine industry in that we, we run the two largest and longest running wine showcase events in both in the Northern Virginia area, Vintage Virginia and the Virginia Wine Festival. And beyond that, we have all sorts of thoughts and wild ideas, but our priority has been and remains to make Floyd Fest just the number one, number one festival, really. And it's our passion, it's our love, and we've seen too many, too many um, efforts become watered down or diluted by early expansion, or even expansion generally. And, you know, we're, if that were to be the case, we would not be interested in doing anything else. Um, we're happy. 